Putin talks to an American friend, the Russian president turning to right-wing conspiracy theorist Tucker Carlson to speak. Carlson's conversation with Putin is expected to be released momentarily. It is a conversation that the Kremlin is eager for the world to see. Well, why? For that, just listen to the answer from Putin's spokesman fawning over Carlson. We receive many requests for interviews with the president. There is no desire to communicate with such media outlets. And there is hardly any point in it. There is hardly any benefit from it. He has a position that differs from the others. He, Carlson, has a position that differs from the others. And so, while Putin sees no benefit in sitting down for an interview with a journalist, he does see benefit from a conversation with Carlson because of this. Hard to see why he's a threat to us. I don't think Putin is well, comparable to him. I, we should probably take the side of, of, of Russia uh, uh, if we have to choose between Russia and Ukraine. It might be worth asking yourself, since it is getting pretty serious, what is this really about? Why do I hate Putin so much? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? Does he eat dogs? These are fair questions, and the answer to all of them is no. Vladimir Putin didn't do any of that. Carlson has also given Putin cover when it comes to claims that Russia blew up a crucial dam. Remember that dam in that Russian-controlled area that Putin had taken over in southern Ukraine? Look at this. It's not like Vladimir Putin is anxious to wage war on himself. Oh, but that's where you're wrong, Mr. and Mrs. Cable News consumer. Vladimir Putin is exactly that sort of man, the sort of man who'd shoot himself to death in order to annoy you. We know this from the American media. The American media, separate from himself. But it's not just defending Putin's invasion of another sovereign country. It's actually also personal slams against Vladimir Zelensky, which, as you'll see here in this case, is a barely veiled call out of Zelensky's Jewish heritage. Sweaty and rat like, a comedian turned oligarch, a persecutor of Christians, a friend of BlackRock. Ever since Tucker Carlson landed in Moscow, the state run media has really said it all. They've treated him like a true celebrity, down to the details about, uh, you know, when and how he charged his cell phone. They ran video of Carlson eating at a fast food joint. And the fawning goes both ways. Most Americans have no idea why Putin invaded Ukraine or what his goals are now. They've never heard his voice. That's wrong. Well, actually, that is wrong. That is not true. We do hear from Putin regularly. We hear his voice. And what he says is written about, we play him on this show. In fact, here he is in a four-hour press conference in December, specifically telling all of us exactly what his goals are now. There will be peace when we achieve our goals. They haven't changed. This is the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine and its neutral status. So there's the goals in his own voice, and he says they haven't changed. The world also knows exactly why Putin invaded Ukraine. He handed out a document to every single Russian soldier explaining why Ukraine is not a country in the summer before he invaded. And just three weeks ago, Putin once again said, quote, the statehood of Ukraine will soon be in question. Putin wants total domination of Ukraine. He's never said that it's anything else. He's very clear. And for real journalists who have traveled to Russia and reported on the facts during this war, they have been jailed. Evan Gerskovich from The Wall Street Journal. He's languishing right now in prison. Vladimir Karamurza. He's also right now in a penal colony. Look, everyone wants to hear from Putin more. That's why media outlets like CNN, we request access constantly. Many times requested an interview from Peskov. We hope that Putin will choose to do an interview with a journalist. Out front now, Evgenia Karamurza. She is the wife of the jailed Russian journalist and activist, Vladimir Karamurza, who I just showed you. He was arrested after speaking out against Putin's invasion of Ukraine and was just unexpectedly moved to one of Russia's most brutal penal colonies in Siberia. He is serving a 25-year sentence. And Evgeny, I know you and I have spoken many times uh, during this war. Uh, your husband is in prison right now, 25 years. He, he, he just moved to a, another penal colony. And I know you have had to deal with the reality that you might not see him again because he called the Russian government a, quote, regime of murderers. Obviously, it is not a country with free speech. What is your reaction when you hear the Kremlin promoting this as a real interview with Putin now? 
Um, good evening, Erin. It's a pleasure to join you again. Um, well, you know, even if I didn't know anything about Mr. Carlson, uh, about his career in journalism and about his quite questionable opinions about certain things, uh, there would be still alarm bells ringing very loudly in my head. And uh, take, for example, the fact that, according to Peskov, um, Mr. Carlson is a journalist who is telling the truth. We're talking about the country where people who are actually telling the truth end up behind bars and are being treated as spies, foreign agents and traitors, like my husband, Vladimir Karamurza, who was sentenced to 25 years for so-called treason for consistently denouncing the crimes committed by the Russian army in Ukraine and consistently denouncing repression by the Putin regime inside of the country. Uh, this is the reality. Uh, in 2022 alone, over 200,000 independent online media resources were banned were blocked by the Russian authorities and the remaining independent media outlets were closed down and banned and a countless number of journalists were forced to flee the country fearing persecution and those who stayed behind basically do their work anonymously because they are under constant threat of arrest or forced exile. This is the country uh, that we're talking about uh, where truth is being consistently persecuted by the authorities. And of course, uh, the fact that uh, Mr. Carlson is there is, um, well, it's not only atrocious, but um, Vladimir Putin needs him. You see, um, the reach of his own propagandists like Margarita Simonyan or uh, Vladimir Solovyov um, is, the main on Russian television. is limited. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, those are uh, one of the most notorious propagandists ever. And but their reach is limited now. Um, Mr. Carlson has over 11 million followers on Twitter and other social media. So uh, Vladimir Putin needs him to put out that image of reality that he himself um, promotes through propaganda, that image of reality in which his claims on Ukraine are somehow legitimate and in which he's a good guy who really wants peace. Meanwhile, four more civilians were killed in shelling today in Kiev and people in Russia continue being thrown in jails and tortured there for telling the truth about the nature of this regime. Evgeny, I know a week from today is your 20th wedding anniversary. You had a chance to briefly, uh, your husband called briefly, they allowed one call. Um, on the last call, you had 15 minutes and you didn't speak to him because you gave those 15 minutes to your three children so they could speak to their father. What is the latest you're hearing about how Vladimir is doing? Because I know and it is important that people understand that his health is not good. Um, Vladimir has been moved to a so-called special regime prison colony, which is the harshest grade in the Russian penitentiary system. He's uh, still in a solitary cell uh, where the bed is affixed to the wall from morning till night where he doesn't get any human contact except for when he's still allowed to see his uh, lawyer, rarely. Um, and, well, um, it is true that last time uh, the kids were able to speak to him were at the end of last year, um, close to New Year's, Vladimir was allowed one 15-minute phone call with the kids, and that was the first phone call in over half a year. We have three kids. Divide 15 by three. That means three minute, uh, five minutes each. And I was literally standing there with a timer because I couldn't let any of our kids to speak for more than five minutes to their father. And of course, yes, I, I didn't speak to him at all because I didn't want to take that time away from the kids. Now, Vladimir put in a request for a phone call on our 20th wedding anniversary. And a couple of days ago, he received an official denial. Um, that um, paper said that the reason for the call was not justified enough, that was not on the list of exceptional circumstances which would allow such a call, um, unlike, for example, death, they said. So uh, if anyone dies, then maybe Vladimir will be allowed to talk to me. This is the reality of Vladimir Putin's Russia.
Evgenia, thank you very much. It's important. We all hear it. I appreciate it.